unless it's a really bad business idea, it's, there's plenty of people who are going to be interested. There are, nothing is really saturated. We think some markets are saturated and the truth is, is that they're not. And even in the coaching world, right, it can seem like it's saturated because there's so many coaches, but there's not. We have hardly tapped into um, the world of coaching. Most people don't have coaches yet. And so <clears throat> that being the case, what we say is that all of those excuses of why it doesn't work the way you had hoped, it's really not the excuses problem. It's kind of your problem. <laughs> you have maybe gotten in your own way. And so the good news about that is, and that's kind of hard to admit for some people, um, but the good news about that is, is if you're the problem, then you're also the solution. And so we can stay right here at home and take care of business. And that's where I love to bring in the essential oils to say, okay, what is it? First of all, what's my excuse? And now let's use this to say, what does that mean for me? So maybe you're saying, um, uh, I can't find anybody. I can't find anybody to work with me. I can't, I, I'm not finding anybody who is interested in, in what I'm doing. Well, you might have some kind of a, a little hidden block there that you don't deserve to receive, that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not um, worthy of success. So do we, we see these things popping up often. And so we take them and we say, well, let's get that gone. Let's get rid of that. And so one of the things we find now we're talking about to a group who are introverts. And so we find sometimes um, that we get a little nervous speaking to other people, especially when we go to events or parties or we try to go talk to somebody new, right? So why don't we, now Kim, we did a great interview last week where you talked about so many fantastic ideas of what to do to prepare for those situations. And I threw in a little bit about essential oils, so I'd like to throw a little more on top of that. Yes, that was just like, good. Just tell you how to do it, okay? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about an oil called tea tree oil or melaleuca. And I have one in a roller bottle right here that's already diluted. And melaleuca is a great prepping oil because it helps you to, it helps to kind of clear off some emotional baggage that you've got. So just the melaleuca oil itself. Yep, just the melaleuca oil itself. Okay. And so anytime you're prepping to meet with other people, go to a group event, do anything like that, then I like to clean off first. Now melaleuca, if, if you don't already know what tea tree oil is good for, it's good for clearing out some... It's well, good for everything. Everything, <laughs> okay. But it, it helps some get some yucky stuff out of your body. And mm -hmm. maybe that are some fungus that might be growing on your toes or, or whatever. So we can apply that to, to get rid of those um, unwanted attachments physically. Emotionally, it's the same thing. And so we're going to use it to get rid of some of our emotional baggage. So I like to just put it on my wrists. Okay, rub that in. I like it on my chest because we hold a lot in our chest. And then I get it on the back of my neck. And that's it. Now I'm cleaned up. Okay. I mean, this is a quick little clean off. You know, this isn't, you can do a lot deeper stuff than that, but this is just to get a quick clean up, get rid of some of the garbage that's been hanging around for the last few days. Maybe a, maybe a little interaction that you had with, with somebody that wasn't, didn't feel very good. Maybe you even got on Facebook or Instagram and you saw something negative that made you feel yuck or somebody said something that you thought was directed at you, that kind of thing. Uh, Melaleuca is a really good oil just to help clear that off because we get overwhelmed with every, all the information coming in and all the negativity coming in. I think it's amazing how, you, you know, you could look at uh, the oil and say, ah, that's not going to work. But I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> it does work. Because I remember you helped me with the time and I was having some issues <laughs> at that moment and you said rub the time on your liver I'm like we well, I don't even know what a liver is but where well, you told me where it was and, <laughs> and I rubbed it on there and I was I was really angry 
yeah. or something like that. And I put yeah. the time on there. I almost take a bath in the time because sometimes, yeah. you know, people get to you and it just mellowed me right out. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh man, I need to put some water on. So <laughs> my husband was like, where are you? I'm getting some time. <laughs> In time, in time to myself. I'm in time out. <laughs> That's right. Time is fantastic for, for what you just addressed because our liver is where we hold a lot of our anger. And so we want to keep that liver um, cleaning, keep it cleaning out. We have to actually, if, if you haven't started doing this yet, then you have to really clean out your liver. And then you need to maintain it after that because Every day we are hit by other people now, especially if you have a business online or if you watch the news. You do either of those two things and you're, you're hit hard by emotions or, or um, other people's negativity. And so you've really got to stay on top of taking care of your body physically and emotionally. So let's, let's bring in lemon to that even kind of with the time. So lemon is fantastic for your liver. And so you can put lemon actually on your liver. And if you're using a really good quality oil, you can put it in your water and, and drink it so that it helps to flush some of those toxins out. And remember, if we're thinking about the physical side, we're also talking about it emotionally. They go hand in hand. And so that's going to help to flush that out. Lemon also is fantastic because on an emotional level, it helps you to inspire some natural playfulness so when you're an introvert and you get a little bit nervous, you might want to bring out a little bit more of the light heartedness in you that makes you a little more playful. So you're not so serious because you're focusing so hard, right? To do what you're supposed to do. Some people do get goofy, but most introverts are going to stay more serious because mm -hmm. we have so much going on in our heads, but when we have that confidence to go into that situation, using lemon is really great. You can put it here on your temples um, or over your liver. And those are some great ways to use the, the lemon oil. Okay. So now, <clears throat> okay, another one. This one I'm gonna talk about is a combination, a blend oil that has several different oils in it. And this one's called Breathe. And the cool thing about Breathe is it helps you breathe. And we talk about it when we're not feeling well, but what about when we're panicky? Mm. Don't people say, just breathe. And you just take a deep breath and all of a sudden things feel better. And in fact, if you do any kind of meditation or yoga or, or any of that stuff, it's all focused on breathing because the breath of life is so very valuable. And so putting breathe on your chest so that it gets to your lungs, you can also put it in your elbow creases and that helps to get to your lungs really well. And that's gonna give you more breath and more breath is more calming. And so that's a really valuable essential oil. So tell me, I, I diffuse a lot of my oils and I blend them together for, um, like especially when I wanna sleep or if I want some stress relief. Do you find then they're more powerful right out of the bottle onto the body than in a diffuser? No, there's different reasons for each one. Okay, so when you breathe things in, that you put in the diffuser, and, and if you don't have a diffuser, you can even sit and hold the bottle and smell it for a little while. And you're going to affect your olfactory nerves. You're going to get into your limbic brain from smelling them. And our limbic brain is the control system for all of our um, reactionary moods. All the things that we do that are just very instinctive and, and reactionary, that's what we want to get to because we've got to stop living um, in a reactionary mode, which is mm. just the habit we have created. Often okay. things that have been taught to us as kids that you just repeat, 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 or habits that you've gotten yourself into. And so we want to get out of that kind of that automated driver is that limbic system. And so when we inhale and smell the oils, they affect that limbic brain and can calm it down and help us to make a, a, a conscious thought before we react. Okay, okay so that's smelling it. 
Yes. Okay. So, so that's one thing it can do in a diffuser. The other thing in a diffuser, especially for sleep, is you can let it run for four to 12 hours at a time. And it's just a mild stimulation of your, of your, either your hormones or your neurotransmitters or, or whatever is being, um, depending on the oil, it's going to have a reaction in your brain. So you're going to get that through the night and you can have it as a consistent and during the day if you're yeah. trying to accomplish something. So different things for different reasons is why we would use it aromatically versus topically. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so we're talking about reasons blocking blocks that keep people from pursuing or working in their business and being successful in their business. And we talked about uh, such things as um, opening up your ability to think clearly, freely, without anger, without emotion. So what about, I know a lot of coaches even get into the business because they had um, some kind of a health issue that caused them, and they, and they had an, a transformation. So something something happened that, they could no longer work anyway. And they had a health concern that they now don't have, but they might still have the pain associated with that health concern, which keeps them really from being as much as they were before. And you gave me some great tips on how to address the pain issues that keep me from, that were keeping me inside, away from others because the pain was just too intense. So, so you're talking about physical pain, yeah? Physical pain, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there's some really, really fantastic oils for physical pain. The cool thing is, is I'll talk about it physically, but it's also going to help emotionally with physical, with emotional pain. So <clears throat> some great oils for that are, um, well, there's so, so many. So we want to use oils that help with the, the first line of defense is the inflammatory response because where there's pain, there's always inflammation. Mm -hmm. And so to bring down some some um, inflammation, we can use, well, my first go-to oil is frankincense. Frankincense is fantastic for anything that is um, inflamed, really. It calms, it's, it helps on a cellular level for cellular support, which is what we need for everything, right? So frankincense is, they call it the king of the oils because when in doubt, you just use your frankincense because it's gonna work at a cellular level and it's gonna work on your inflammatory response. It's also very calming and it works on the, um, your central nervous system. Now and that, you can't drink that, right? Yes, you can, if you have a good brand. You can put it in your water? Uh, I just dump it in my mouth. <laughs> Like a couple drops? Yeah. I just put it under my tongue um, or I put it in a capsule, um, okay. an empty capsule with a couple of other oils. It's also really great for just solidifying everything you've just done and it rounds everything else out and makes it work really well. So then what you're going to do when you have some chronic pain is you layer the oils on the, the spot. You know, maybe it's your, your back or your shoulder or or what have you, we've got to layer a few oils on. So the frankincense really helps with the inflammation. And then there's a couple of oils that help with, with the inflammation and kind of the pain at the same time. Lemongrass is one of them. Mm -hmm. so when we layer the frankincense and the lemongrass, and then we love to have something with a, like a peppermint in it because the peppermint helps to drive it in deeper. Yes. And, uh, the, the brand I use is doTERRA and we have a blend called deep blue. And that is some people know like icy hot, some of those brands of, of um, things that you use for pain. It's kind of like that, except it's, it's all pure and clean and essential oils and there's no additives. And that helps that's got peppermint in it and that can help drive it in as well as it's got some helichrysum in it, which is really good for actually starting to restore that part of the body. Mm. So, we want to work on inflammation, pain, and restoration at the same time. That's great. Yeah. And so that is one of the most fundamental ways of getting to that pain problem. Now, there's a slew of other oils, and actually everybody's different, as well as maybe it depends on what the pain is. Is it a ligament? Is it a muscle? Is it a bone issue? Then you'll, you'll make a variation from there. Mm-hmm. 
and get the correct oils to work with that pain. But let me take it a step further um, because if you, if you still have some pain or and maybe you have an injury or maybe you've been sick, one of the things I do is we research the emotional side to what's happening in that part of your body. So say if it's your shoulder, then it's going to be you're carrying on too much weight of the world, mm -hmm. too many stressors. And if it happens to be your right shoulder, then it's related to family matters. Okay, what about the left shoulder? <laughs> and if it's your left shoulder, it relates to financial. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> need some so, more money then. <laughs> you need some more money, sister? Let's get you some more money. Let's get some more money and get the pain to go away. <laughs> Yeah, and so so we go. Okay, what what? It, now we have a really good direct path to say, what do I need to work on here? Where do I go from here? Mm. Well, if we've got some money issues, well, we might have some money blocks that we're still needing to work on. That might be, or you, maybe you're spending too much that you don't have. I mean, it can be we we have to investigate. So I'm kind of a sleuth. You know, you go in and you get all the information, and then you you start to discover what it is that's going on. And then we pull the oils out to address it. We do some releasing and then we start to rebuild again. Wow. And it's, it's just so powerful to see. And let me add a side note here because you know, we're, we're talking maybe about you for a minute, but the vulnerability in this is that everyone needs to work on self-improvement emotionally and physically until you're not breathing any longer. We never get to that point where we've, we've reached the point where we have no more self-development to do. Wouldn't that be nice? I always say when your laundry is done and you never have to do it again, then you're done with self-development. And when are we done with our laundry? We're never done with the darn laundry. Mm -mm. So it's the same with us. And so when we all realize that we're all continuing to work on this, there's a lot less judgment, a lot less judgment for self and for other people. Because it's harder to not self-judge. Yeah. yeah. It's just, we, do, we don't need to self-judge, but we need to self-observe. Mm. And go, oh, look at how my pain is showing up. It's showing up in a little anger today. And I don't say really nice words today. I better go work on that. That's okay. That's okay. To assume that we have reached perfection is the worst scenario that you can be in. People are always saying, you're perfect just the way you are. Well, no, we're actually not but we learn to love ourselves where we are yeah. and open ourselves to the journey to continue getting, getting healthier. Yep. I think that that process it, that it's a continual process. And a lot of times we don't really, people don't know that there's a, pro, a way to get out of it. They just live with it. Yeah. I know I didn't until we, well, um, until we really started talking, I didn't realize the, where my pain was coming from yeah you, you know you go to the doctor and they'll tell you well you're under stress okay but where is yeah. that coming from and medication cannot always be the answer right so you know popping all those pills i was like i, I can't do that because it it has different effects on you and i so much prefer using the oils for addressing my pain Absolutely. And, and there's a time and a place, right? We, we always weigh this out. I, I teach my kids when they're young. I've always tried to say to them, because they often want the quick, quick fix, which I get, you know, if somebody gets a headache and they just want to take ibuprofen. And I just say, you weigh it out. You decide if you want to do a tiny bit of damage to your liver or if you want to go grab some oils. But you get to decide. Personally, the oils for most headaches work faster than waiting 40 minutes for ibuprofen to work. Yeah. But um, kids are kids and they're impulsive and they think, no, for sure this way will work. Because, you know, sometimes the oils don't work the right one. You didn't get the right one the first time. And so it takes sometimes a little bit of work. But I say weigh it out. And isn't that how it is for all of us? We have to weigh out the cost of mm -hmm. taking medications, which can have side effects. In our, they all have side effects in our body. Mm -hmm. It may be worth it, though. So, we Definitely. Wait. Yeah. so you've been doing this for 10 years. So let's do a side, side note and okay. tell us what caused you to take this journey towards essential oil wellness. Okay. Hmm. Well, in the beginning, when I started using essential oils, I had already become a holistic health coach, 
but essential oils weren't really a part of what I did. Um, I think I had maybe two essential oils at the time, and I don't think I really ever used them. And, and when you only have two and you put one on once or twice, it doesn't, you don't really get converted to it. And maybe they didn't work so well. I don't remember the brands I had, but I never used them again. And so when my kids were a certain age, um, so if it's been 10 years ago, I remember thinking, you know, I've always tried to do things pretty naturally. I, I had learned about antibiotics on an ear infection and how if you would let the ear infection go the first time of the year and let the body heal it, then it, it, what you, they would not get another ear infection that year. And I'd read about that. And so my daughter got an ear infection. And so I took her in because I was nervous. I, my first child, and you know, I'm not going to let her suffer or I'm not going to make a an educated choice. This was before I was a holistic health coach, but anyway, right before. So I took her in and the doctor said, yep, she's got an ear infection. Here's some penicillin, whatever. And I said, okay, so I read this. Is this true? She said, oh yeah, it is. And I was like, okay, well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, why don't you tell me? Just l try to let it go. And I said, okay, so how long can I go with a fever before I need to put her on the penicillin? So I, I got the prescription. I'm not, you know, going to be reckless here because I didn't have any other tools. I got the, I took it home with me. I let her, her go until the doctor said three days with a high fever is all you can do. And so I think it was by like day two, her fever broke. She got better. She didn't get an ear infection again. She's only had one other ear infection. I think she's 18 now. I think when she was 12, she got swimmer's ear. She has these teeny ears. Her ears are teeny. She was premature. Well, she wasn't considered premature, but she was under four, four pounds when she was born. And so everything's teeny about her and she gets water stuck in there. And so she got an inner ear infection. That's it. Her whole life. Wow. That's yeah. cool. So a few years down the road from that experience, I started thinking I need proactive support for what I'm trying to do. I'd rather have some essential oils when my kids say, mom, my ear is hurting. So I don't have to run to the doctor grab the prescription, make sure, come home, wait my three days, whatever. Why not just start applying something to it immediately? And so I really wanted to be empowered with my kids' health. That's how I started. Yeah. Because it's my first line of defense. If they don't work, I'll take them. Maybe I missed the boat and it got too bad. And so I'll take them in. So that's how I got started. And then we had a lot of um, emotional problems come up with my kids. We've got um, I've got three adopted children. And so we've got a lot of emotional stuff. And when I really took the deep dive, I tried it on them and in their anger and disagreement with me using them on them, I turned to me and I changed my life. Wow. And now I can much better manage my kids and I'm a better mom because of it. Like night and day, you guys, night and day. So that is the transformation that happened for me. That is amazing. So as we wrap up, if, if someone is struggling or anxious about the decision they've made to be in business for themselves, and at this moment they're like teetering, should I stay, should I go, what, what essential oils would you recommend they start using just to calm them so they can think logically? Yeah. Um, lavender is always a great start. Lavender, um, when you put it over your heart, and when I say heart, it's actually your, your breastbone right between your boobs. That's called okay. your heart. Okay. When you put lavender there, it's not only calming, but it helps you to get more authentic and it helps you go deeper. So that's really great for finding some of that clarity. And then using some bergamot, we talked about this in the other one, on your stomach gives you some feelings of self-worth so that while you're processing through this information, you're not feeling terrible about yourself. Because when you feel terrible about yourself, you're gonna quit. Mm -hmm. You feel good about yourself, you get authentic and get clear, you may not be in the right business. And so you may say with confidence, what am I doing? I, I, this isn't the love of my life. That is the love of my life, this other business. Yeah. Uh, or if this is the love of their life, then they're going to go, of course I can do this. I just got down on myself. I got frustrated. I need to get better clarity and get a plan and move forward. 
And they need a mentor or a coach to help. I, mean, I don't know how you can be in business and not have one or the other. Uh, oh, well, of course, I agree with you completely. I almost always have a mentor, a coach, a health coach. I've got something going on all the time. I, I, I work with someone for a while, switch things up, switch modalities even. And um, my growth has depended on that for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So you have this a, a group called Oil Me Up on Facebook. Yes. <clears throat> it's a free group and they can they can request to join. Yes. And in that group you guys talk a lot more about these essential oils. So tell yes. us a little about the group. Yes, the group is it's free to anyone to get into this group. I mean not that you would charge, I'm saying. It's actually an open group, but I think it says on there you have to request. I don't know why. But anyway, it is an open group. And I share some other tips and tips and tips on health nutrition and mainly essential oils and their uses and so you can scroll through and look at a lot of the old information that's been posted as well as um, I'm going to be you'll get some information about some zoom classes in there and I'm doing one tomorrow and so that information is in there um, we can also put the link to the zoom call in this in the comments yep um, either way, but just come join us and start reading. If you've got essential oils, you're going to learn a lot more about how to use them. And if you don't have them yet, you're going to see how powerful they can be for you. Well, you know, 30 minutes goes so quickly. I know. And I talk a lot. Sorry. <laughs> no, it was perfect. I mean, I've learned so much and I'm so thankful for your knowledge and how you're willing to share with everyone. So I pray that it's been beneficial to them. And I look forward to us being together again. And of course we will. We're in each other's groups. Yeah. But uh, um, we'll talk later. So any closing words from you? Um, yeah, you know, really just don't go too hard on yourselves. That's the biggest thing is that we're so hard on ourselves. And so get that clarity and say, okay, wait, just observe. Stand outside of yourself and, and look in as an observer instead of the judge and jury. And, and you'll make some good progress just by doing that. And all will be well. All will be well. All right, girl. Thank you bye. so much. And we'll talk yeah. to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.